Hi, welcome back to another video. We all know that to build muscle, we need protein. But to maximize protein muscle building benefits, this lost more than just slamming a protein shake after every workout. In this video, I will share with you the latest science on the best protein sources, how much protein you really need, and how your protein intake should change with age, how to consume it, and should you care about post-workout protein to maximize muscle growth. But before we go any further, could I ask you for a small favor by hitting the like button, subscribe, and sharing your thoughts or feedbacks in the comments below. Thank you. So let's start with protein type. So there are two factors scientists use to rank how effective a protein source will be at building muscle. The first is digestibility. The higher the score means that there are more of that protein can be broken down and used to build muscle. Second, every protein source contains a variety of different amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. There are 20 in total, but nine of these can't be produced by the body and are defined as essential. These are the most important amino acids for building muscle. So what protein sources have the highest digestibility and the highest essential amino acid content? Well, it's typically the protein sources you would expect from protein powder, meat, fish, and dairy products. Human muscle also score pretty high. Oh, but don't get any weird ideas. Plant-based protein don't score very well, but we will discuss what this means for us later on. Now, here is some new research suggesting that digestibility and amino acid content may not be all we should consider. Take a look at this study back in 2017. A study has subject eat either 18 grams of protein from whole eggs or 18 grams of protein from eggs white after a workout. Researchers analyzed the muscle protein synthesis response after eating the meal, which you can think of basically as a signal to your muscle to recover and grow bigger. Generally, you would expect it to be the same given the equal protein content. To everyone's surprise, the whole egg lead to a significantly higher muscle protein synthesis response. But the real question is, would these increase actually lead to more muscle growth? Well, a few years later, after the publication of the above study, another group of researchers came to answer that question. They assigned one group to eat 20 grams of protein from three whole eggs after every workout. Whereas the other group ate the same amount of protein, but by consuming six egg whites without the yolk. Both groups also eat the same amount of total calories and protein throughout the day. Now, after 12 weeks, the whole egg group increased their strength and reduced their body fat percentage to a significantly greater extent than egg white group. There's also a strong trend towards a greater increase in lean body mass in the whole egg group. And although it is unclear what made whole egg superior, it may be linked to the cholesterol content and possibly some additional nutrients contained within the yolk. So how about plant-based protein sources? Are they less effective than animal-based protein sources at building muscle? Well, the answer might surprise you. Remember how the plant-based protein sources rank relatively poorly when it comes to digestibility and essential amino acid content. Because of this, they tend to result in a lower protein synthesis response when compared to animal-based protein sources. But protein synthesis does not always correlate well with changes in muscle growth. And in the 2021 study, the researchers investigate further by comparing the effects of a vegan diet versus a primarily animal-based diet over the course of a 12-week training program. The vegan group supplemented with soy protein and also made an effort to vary their protein sources throughout the day, just to make sure they weren't deficient in any particular essential amino acid. Surprisingly, both diets led to similar increases in both muscle size and strength. And this same result was shown in a similar study published in 2023. However, researchers highlighted the outcome was likely heavily dependent on two things, eating enough daily protein, as well as properly spreading out that protein throughout the day. Both are what we are going to cover next. So eating too little protein and you won't maximize your growth, but eating too much has its downsides as well. So what is the sweet spot? Well, it depends on the best piece of evidence we have so far, a meta-analysis that looked at the effect of protein intake on muscle growth across 49 studies. They found that adding more protein to one's diet significantly increased muscle mass, on average by about 0.66 pound over the length of the studies. However, although more protein did lead to more growth, 
This was only true up to a point. In this case, protein intakes above around 0.73 gram per pound of body weight per day fail to help build any additional muscle. So for the average 180 pound, approximately 80 kilograms individual, these would come up to around 130 gram of protein per day. And remember, this is to maximize growth. Even if you're below this, you will definitely still be able to build muscle. So don't get discouraged with this apparently high target. In all the studies, the subjects were eating at either maintenance calories or in a calorie surplus. But what about when you're in a calorie deficit? This is when the body is more likely to burn off muscle for energy. And it's when an even higher protein intake could help to prevent this. Well, unfortunately, we don't yet have a study comparing protein intakes that are both higher during a calorie deficit, such as 0.8 gram per pound of body weight versus 1.2 gram per pound of body weight. But there is some speculative evidence suggesting that the cleaner you get or the more aggressive your diet is, the higher your protein intake should be to prevent muscle loss. But again, it is relatively unclear. So I would recommend if you're maintaining or eating in a surplus, to maximize growth, aim for a minimum of 0.73 gram per pound of body weight per day. You can also go higher than this. It is perfectly safe and may have other benefits like helping with hunger. But I generally wouldn't go above 1.2 gram per pound of body weight, since by that point, those additional calories may be better used towards carbs to help fuel your performance and energy in the gym. Whereas when you're in a deficit, there's no harm in being extra cautious and bumping up your minimum protein intake to 1 gram per pound of body weight a day, especially if you're relatively lean. However, these protein recommendations are based on your total body weight. But if two people weigh the same, yet one has significantly less muscle and more fat, then that individual will need as much protein. So if your body fat is higher than around 30% for males and around 40% for females, instead of using my gram per pound recommendation, you can take your height in centimeter and simply eat that amount of protein in grams per day. Okay, so you know how much protein you should eat per day. But if you want to truly maximize the growth you get from that protein, then how exactly you eat that protein throughout the day also matters. You see, every time you consume protein, your muscle protein synthesis levels increase, which as you now know, is basically a signal for your muscle to grow. However, you can only increase this up to a point, and it seems like around 20 to 30 grams of protein pretty much maxes this out. In addition to this, after this increase, there's some evidence that you won't be able to re-stimulate it again for at least a couple of hours. And this is where protein distribution comes into play. Theoretically, if you space out your protein evenly throughout the day, you will be able to keep your muscle protein synthesis levels elevated and provide a consistent signal for your muscles to grow. But to determine if this actually makes any difference on muscle growth, let's take a look at this study in 2020. Subjects were assigned to one of two groups. One had a low protein breakfast, an average protein lunch, and a high protein dinner. The other group had a more even protein distribution across the three meals. Both groups tried to eat a similar amount of total daily protein, but the uneven protein distribution group actually ended up eating about 10 grams more protein per day on average. So what happened? Well, after 12 weeks of this, combined with the strength training program, the evenly distributed protein group had slightly more favorable strength increases for all five of the exercises tested, and also had slightly more favorable increase in total lean mass. That said, the daily protein intake for both groups were quite low, and the sample size was pretty small for the study. But it does provide some evidence that distributing your protein to at least three meals per day may have a benefit. But what about increasing this further to four, five, or even six protein meals per day? Would that provide an even greater benefit? Well, a study that was published a year after this one helps to provide some insight. Researchers compared the effects of spreading daily protein intake evenly across either three or six meals per day. Now, after eight weeks, there were no significant differences in muscle growth or any other measurements recorded. So, use three meals as a minimum but feel free to eat more than this if it helps making hitting your daily protein targets more manageable. Now, pretty much all the research I've covered so far was done with young adults. But as you age, it seems like your body becomes less and less sensitive to protein. 
So although yet to be directly studied, if you're 60 or over, make sure you have at least 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal from a high quality source, which may be beneficial for muscle growth. Just always keep in mind that above all, your daily protein intakes is what is most important. I also need to make you aware that these advice are generalized and may not therefore be suitable for everyone. Please seek further advice if needed. Thank you so much for watching and until next week, take care. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is free of charge but will help the channel to grow. If you're interested in improving your health and fitness or losing weight, if you suffer from or wish to prevent back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon Worldwide. Thank you.